What's up everybody, Sam here, and if you're watching this, I'm assuming you've at least heard about the internet. Oh, so, so you like the internet? Well, happy birthday to you then. Here are eight reasons why I hate the internet. Let's talk about Facebook. So I was on the other day and I come across this picture with a caption next to it. You guys have seen these. And obviously, I mean, this picture with a caption next to it must be true, right? So I'm pretty sure this one was true, but that's kind of beside the point. So this post was about a French girl who had married her boyfriend after he had died. And if, if you're a normal human being like me, that probably sounds kind of odd to you, right? So I go to the comments on this picture, very bad idea by the way. Sure enough, the top comment comes from a guy who seems to think a lot like I do. It says, till death do us part? See, the way I see it, this is a valid point. But then I look at the replies to this comment. You heartless animal, how could you say something so cruel? I hope you die, you beast. <sighs> Please, she married a dead person. Is that not, I don't, I don't know, a little bit weird? To any of you? Just asking. Facebook comment trolls. I wonder about them. But while we're talking about Facebook, how about the suggested poke section? What? Is there anything more awkward on Facebook? I don't know. So Facebook servers, however many thousand miles they are away from me, are sitting there, looking at my activity, seeing who I interact with, and then using that information to decide who I should virtually poke? Please tell me I'm not the only one who thinks about these things. Oh, and guilt trips. Facebook guilt trips. It's Mother's Day. Click like if you love your mama and want her to live a long and happy life with lots of ponies. Ignore if you want your mom to die a slow and painful death in a tub of acid. Why don't, why don't we just move on? I really have no words for that. Okay, so what is it with all those random social networking sites out there that get like no traffic? I'm looking at you, LinkedIn. Everybody talks about you, but nobody actually uses you. I use Facebook and Twitter. Y'all need to get on my level. I have a very special spot in my heart for this next one. YouTube comments. Don't know what I'm talking about? Global warming, homosexuality, Obamacare, abortion, God, Republicans or Democrats, capitalism or socialism, Mac or PC. Now watch the comments. Now let me know when one of you hears someone say this. My personal beliefs about fill in the blank are completely and radically changed when I read a very convincing YouTube comment. No one will ever say that ever. Trust me. Since when were people's minds changed by YouTube comments? Oh, well, I wasn't totally convinced at first, but then he turned on caps lock, and that's when I realized that he was actually right and I was wrong. Number six is advertisements. Now, I don't usually mind advertisements. I mean, th that's just business. It's just trying to get people interested in what you have to offer. Cool. So I've been seeing these ads lately that say, eat this, never diet again. The holy grail of weight loss. But they look like crap. I mean, look at these. You know, I'm not particularly interested in losing weight at the moment, but if I was and I saw that, I'd just be like, no, I'm staying fat. What kind of marketing is this madness? I mean, this looks like some kind of pancake made out of an octopus suction cup. I wouldn't eat this if you paid me. So eventually I start seeing that there are other pictures all saying the same thing. And I realized, okay, something has to be up. So I let curiosity get the better of me and I clicked on one of the ads. And it took me to Dr. Oz's website where I found out that this holy grail of weight loss was actually a bean. A bean! I don't know about you, but if the, if, the, if the advertisements would just show pictures of the beans, I would probably be a whole lot more likely to click on it. This horrifies me. Like I said, I wouldn't eat these if you paid me and I was trying to lose weight. But if you just show the bean in the picture, show me the bean, I think I personally would be a whole lot more likely to click on it. Cause I mean, heck, I can do beans. I don't know what marketing has come to when they use horror, that would be the thought of having to eat these, to market something rather unhorrifying. I just don't get it anymore. I don't no. Oh, surveys. You know, when you're just trying to download a program and all of a sudden, BAM! Survey! Rejection! I have never done a survey, and I never will. At least not those kinds of surveys. I actually stole a lottery ticket from a gas station when I was like four or five or something because I thought it was a survey. And last but not least, scams. And yeah, things that are protected by surveys are usually scams anyway, but I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the blatantly obvious things, like when you get an email that says, Oh my gosh, we're stranded on Madagascarabia. Can you hold on to $8 million for us? Just send me your name, date of birth, address, bank account information, social security, Security number and we'll have the money sent right to you. You can even keep two million of it. Or the other things that are like, you are our one millionth visitor. Click here for an iPad mini. 
I have never fallen for these blatantly obvious scams in my life, but the fact that these scams are out there is testimony in and of itself that there are people who do. This scares me. I mean, these people live among us. Just by walking out your front door, you are risking an encounter with one of these people, which is why I never go outside. So there are my eight reasons why I hate the internet. Ironically, now I'm going to turn off the video camera and then edit and upload this video to said internet. So leave a comment below. Why do you hate the internet? I know you all do. Alright, till next time. Sam out.